After posting the last video on the Material Grow Solver, I got some feedback that was left that said that the setup that I used was a little unnecessary and overly complex, which yes it was, but also there was a reason for why I chose the method that I did. And that's what I wanted to just kind of go over as well as showing the other method that you can do that creates the same sort of effect super easily, as well as a couple of other nodes that go along with it. So I just have our scene set up here with the same setup that we used before rebuilt. So just a color, which is black on all the points, and then one point selected on our horn that is set to white with our solver set up. And if you want to learn more about how to set this up, then you can go and watch the last video of the material growth solver. But basically just a point VOP, PC open, PC filter, multiplied constant with a max and then a clamp. And if I press play, you can see that this starts to play across our mesh and it's growing along our horn. And it's not going to just skip across to points that are closer. It's gonna grow along the geometry, which gives a pretty cool effect and you can do some cool things with that. And there is a easier way that doesn't require the solver, but I chose that for a specific reason and I'll go over that here in a second. But let's go ahead and take a look at the other method, which is a distance along geometry. And if I you look here, you can see that there's a couple of other distance nodes. So we'll do distance along geometry. We'll go ahead and wire this in and let's go ahead and select the same point. We can just copy that, actually not from there, but from our color node. So we'll set the same point and then we have a setup going here. So if I click output mask, this gives us the same sort of thing along our object. So if I go ahead and set this to CD, you can see that we can now see our mask. So essentially what this is doing is taking the starting point or the starting points and then it's going to measure along the contours of the geometry and output some sort of value. So in this case, we're remapping it to our red channel of C of our color. So let's go ahead and just set these back to linear for the moment. And you can see as I drag this along, it's only affecting the red channel. And that is perfectly fine because we can use that in the shader as well as a mask. If it's just one channel, it's just going to be black and white. That's because this is a scalar um, ramp, which is fine. So like I said, you can just affect this ramp and you can get the same sort of effect going along your geometry. I can just move this along. It looks like this is going to go above one. So we need to set this not from parameter to maximum distance and then it will go along from the maximum distance. So now if I go ahead and move this along, you can see that it's going to envelop the entire mesh instead of going all the way up to a value of one uh, unit away from our starting point. So that's pretty much the basics of setting up with the distance along geometry. Like I said, there is a couple of other nodes that go along with this. So if I start typing distance again, you see we have distance along curves, uh, from geometry and then from target. From target is essentially um, the same sort of setup as this point cloud, except for it doesn't have as much control. So if I select this, uh, the origin is going to be kind of our starting point. And let's go ahead and just set up the same situation here. So we could, again, set these to linear and then we can affect this the same way setting this to maximum distance you can set this the same way and it'll grow across the mesh however you like and if we wanted to move our origin up let's see it'll just move it up a little bit you can see that it's moving where we are starting out with this growth so you can get the same sort of control except for 
if you have it going across, it's not going across your geometry, it's just measuring the distance. So somewhere like in the middle here, let's see, let's make this pretty, pretty contrasty. We'll raise this up a little bit. And as I start to drag this along, you're gonna see that it starts to come across here before it goes all the way down the legs. So it's kind of skipping over the geometry and it's not really following the contours of the geometry. And this will be actually maybe more apparent if I move this, let's see, not that direction. Yeah, let's see, which direction are we looking for? Let's hit enter and see if we can move this. And if I start to drag this up and now, you can see that it's skipping over the hooves here. So it's just skipping directly onto the geometry down here instead of following the geometry. I don't know how apparent that is for you guys, but that's what it's doing. And that may be not what you're looking for. So like I said, the solver may be more what you're kind of going for. Um, there's a little bit more control over here or if you want to use the distance along geometry. Now, the reason that I used this setup is because this is useful for different things. So while this distance along geometry is nice and this distance from target, you can do similar stuff from this same setup that we have in the solver. You do have a little bit more control in the solver. And if I do a points from volume, wire in our object here, and let's see, let's just wire this into a null so we can see our points. And let's lower the point separation a little bit to maybe like 0.4, or maybe we'll do 0 0.01. Now we have a bunch of points in our Rhino. And if I wire the distance along geometry in here, and I select a point on the horn, it's going to be kind of hard to see, but this doesn't, this won't give us what we're looking for. And that was the, you know, that was the right thing. So it's not giving us what we're looking for um, in here. And if I move this along, you can see that that's going to do nothing to our points. However, if I were to just, let's see, copy these if they want to copy, there we go. I want to copy those and then I'll set our white color to on our horn. Wire this into our solver. You can see that it's already starting to do stuff, but it's going to grow along the contours of our geometry like we had before, except for it's going along the points. So similar thing as the distance along geometry and just in a points version. And that's because this point VOP is looking at the point cloud of our geometry. So you can think of a, of any sort of mesh as being a bunch of points. So every single point, just a point cloud, you actually wouldn't need the, um, the faces here to create this sort of effect. Uh, you can do it all along just the points, which you can't do with the distance along geometry. It does work if you use distance from target. Let's go ahead, wire that in here. And you can see we're getting the same sort of effect as we had before. It's just going along the points. And if I lower this, you can see that it doesn't follow along the contours of the object that you might want. So you got some different options, um, but you do have some more control over this point bop solution. So maybe something that you're wanting to use, you have to decide what's gonna work best for the, the situation that you're in and use that. I just wanted to give you guys uh, a different look at a, a couple different nodes. Um, I use the this point VOP solution because it is a little bit more uh, versatile in my opinion. 
Uh, you can use it in a lot more situations. Um, it's good to, to know. And I guess the distance along geometry is as well, but in this case, I wanted to show a different solution. So hopefully that helped you out and you now have a better understanding of a couple different nodes and you can choose which one will work best for your situation. Um, but anyways, uh, the project files will be available on Patreon. I'll throw this one up as well. So the pro project files for the growth simulation are on Patreon. And then, like I said, this one will go up as well. And then next week we'll dive into some more interesting stuff again. So hopefully this helps you out. Uh, if you're interested in those project files, make sure you grab those. I got a bunch of other stuff planned and coming to Patreon. So make sure you guys don't miss out on that. Uh, I got a bunch of, of cool stuff. That I got in my head. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Check out Patreon if you want those project files and have a good day.